We start this right off with Gypsy Danger pulling up on a kaiju. Bro's name is Knifehead, and I just gotta ask, how did these people come up with the names for the kaiju? I know Knifehead is a little self-explanatory, because Bro's knife is just a head, but every other kaiju after Knifehead, I need an explanation. Stat. So Gypsy Danger saved this boat of semen, but Knifehead didn't take too kindly to that, and he socked the mess of Gypsy Danger. That had Gypsy Danger stumbling, but he fixed his posture and gave Knifehead his receipt with them with the three-piece combo, no biscuit, I'm talking about right hook, left hook into axe handle. Knifehead's rebuttal to that was, what happens if I take off one of your arms? That's foreshadowing one on one right there, but Gypsy Danger pulls out the blick and starts <coughs> shooting Knifehead <coughs> in the stomach. I'm talking about three shots, dropping bro back into the water. Now Raleigh and his brother think that this nigga is dead, but oh boy, do I have some bad news for you. But the guy in their head says, hey bro, he is not dead. You need to grab that boat and get out of there. But they were a little too late. But Knifehead pulls up, slaps the mess out of Gypsy. Raleigh says, it's time to shoot you with the blick. But Knifehead picked up on that foreshadowing I gave him a little bit ago and cut off Gypsy's right arm. Quick little sidebar, I know these niggas link up to the Jaeger, but why they gotta feel the pain? Cause Raleigh started screaming in pain after the robot's arm got cut off. Ain't nothing in the real world where I gotta put a Nero link up, but like, that, that just seems counterproductive, I, I'm not gonna lie. And Knifehead is just pieces of <laughs> gypsy danger, I'm talking about. It's clawed through the hole, Raleigh's older brother starts talking to him, trying to calm him down. And then that nigga gets yoked up out the Jaeger, he's dead, that nigga is gone. Raleigh trying to mourn the loss of his brother, but Knifehead really don't care about that, and he pushes Gypsy Danger up against the rock. And in a last ditch effort, Raleigh pulls out the other handgun that he had, and then he smokes Knifehead. But hey though, on some real stuff, it would be really cool if we hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the month. We are so close. I know there's like a week left in a month by the time this video gets uploaded, but I feel like we could do it. You know, just saying, just hit the subscribe button. I'd prefer if you did it right now while I'm telling you to, to do it. Because if you didn't. I'ma have to dig you down on some gangster shit. Also, while I'm here, go check out my boy Vondo on YouTube. If you like real chill, vibey, laid back talks on anime, then his channel's perfect for you, man. Go check him out. But I think I've been talking long enough. Back to the video. Fast forward like an hour or so into the movie and we get our second Gypsy Danger fight. I was going to give you an explanation as to how we got here, but then we'll just explain the entire movie and I don't feel like doing that. But just know Gypsy Danger finna put in some work. So Gypsy Danger jumps out the battle bus in the smoke frame one. Talk about he landed in the water and then he ripped something off of Leatherhead's back immediately. I don't know what the hell it was, but he ripped it off. It must have hurt because Leatherhead did not take too kindly to that. He yoked up. Gypsy Danger gave this nigga a nasty ass bear hug, spun him around a couple times, and then he threw the mess out of Gypsy Danger. I'm talking about golly, man. That nigga has an arm on him. Bro is playing for the wrong Giants. We did a nigga on the NFL team ASAP. So Leatherback threw Gypsy Danger onto a cargo ship, and then Leatherback jumps on the cargo ship. But Gypsy Danger does this running, jumping. Superman one-handed axe handle, I don't know what to call that, but he did something crazy and it hit Leatherback right on the noggin. So Gypsy Danger grips Leatherback by the horn, hits him with a overhead and then an uppercut. Then he charges up this nasty ass right hook with his elbow rocket and lands it clean on Leatherback's face, rocking the ever-living mess out of Leatherback. And then after bro stumbled a little bit, he says, ah, right, Gypsy Danger, I can't see your ass with the hands, so now I'm gonna start beating your ass with weapons. Old dude pulls off a piece of this crane and bashes Gypsy Danger upside the head with it. And then Gypsy Danger falls down to a knee hitting the Kaepernick. Picks up two handfuls of these shipping containers and starts beating the brakes off a of Leatherback. He sandwiched bro's face with a bunch of shipping containers and then Leatherback got stunned a little bit. And he's like, oh hell no, nah, I'm not gonna let you pop. And Gypsy Danger rocked the ever living mess at a dude again. Right in between bro's eyes. And then Gypsy Danger put leather back in a full Nelson. I thought Gypsy Danger was going to be real as hell for a minute and hit bro with a dragon suplex, but he just kind of threw him. And to be honest with you, that throw really didn't do nothing because leather back landed right back on his feet. I don't know what was going through their minds when they did that. If anything, it just made Leatherback even matter because he starts charging at Gypsy Danger, pushing them back, almost pushing them off the cargo ship. And while Gypsy Danger is getting pushed back, Raleigh in the cockpit says, Hey, Mako, to pull out the blick. And not only does he say pull out the blick, he says, Empty the clip in him. 
shot bro in the stomach so many times his arm fell off oh my goodness and then leatherback's body falls to the ground and gypsy danger is gonna walk away but raleigh learned his mistake he not letting his brother die again but this time it's not his brother it's a woman he's trying to pipe down he not letting them sugar walls get away and he says double tapping and then they make sure leatherback is finally gone and now gypsy danger moves on to otaji gypsy danger came to the fight dragging a boat like a bat oh this nigga different different he smacks the ever-living mess out of Otachi with his boat. I'm talking about Kaiju spit everywhere. That nigga is rocked, dazed, and confused, Schmeckeldorfed even. Gypsy Danger got himself off a four-piece combo with his boat off on Otachi. He tries to go for a fifth one, but Otachi wisens up. His brain stopped rattling in his head, and he's like, all right, time to lock in. And he catches the boat with his tail. It launches the boat, and then it hits the sonic rings out of Gypsy Danger with his tail. Otachi got that lick off and started dipping. She said, I can't handle bro. Bro is like that for real. And then Gypsy Danger turns a corner and loses the big ass huh? Kaiju in the city. How do you fumble that hard, bro? Otachi hits Gypsy Danger with a nasty ass. But I just gotta ask, how did they get behind that building or inside of that building like that? Because that was crazy. But Otachi pops up out of this building, pushes Gypsy Danger into another building. But Gypsy Danger said, you must not be from around here. I'm really like that for you with the hand. And they hit Otachi with an uppercut. And then a clean left hook. Try to go for the three piece with the right hook follow up. But, but Otachi dodged the right hook, grabbed Gypsy Danger and slammed them into a wall. And now Otachi is straight cooking Gypsy. She's pushing bro through the buildings and whatnot. She pushes him through this building. Gypsy Danger falls on his ass and they get back up. Otachi tries to shoot that acid at Gypsy, but bro dodges that. But Gypsy Danger did not take too kindly to that acid being shot at them. And then they reach in Otachi's mouth and try to rip bro's tongue out. Otachi bewildered and befuzzled that they even try to do that. It's not giving them a single chance though. She wraps her tail around Gypsy Danger's left arm. And with that claw thing at the end of Otachi's tail, she's trying to attack the hole that Raleigh and Mako are in. But Maka releases the coolant, freezes, freezes Otachi's tail, and then Gypsy Danger just snaps it in half. And now that Gypsy Danger's left arm is free, they grab Shorty's horn and try to blow her back out the long way. They rip out her tongue, but Otachi didn't take too kindly to that. She wraps her grippers around Gypsy Danger's body and starts clawing at them from the back. And then she stomps on him. And then she just deploys wings. This nigga had this in her back pocket the whole time. Oh, nah. And she starts flying Gypsy Danger out into space. As soon as stars start becoming more visible than cities to me, that's why I'm ejecting out the Jaeger. Nah, you got it. I'm not doing any of that. You, you won. You won. But these niggas are no longer on the planet Earth. They don't got no more hand blasters. Raw is like, hey, man. I think it might be wraps for us, but Mako's was like, nah, we had a sword this whole time. What do y'all mean you had a sword this whole time? You just wasn't going to do nothing about it. But Mako pulls out the sword for Gypsy Danger, and then they cut Otachi in half. Oh my goodness. But now these niggas got to worry about falling down from space back down to Earth, which is, you know, that's, that's cool, I guess. So now we're at the final battle of Pacific Rim. Gypsy Danger and the other Jaeger, I totally forget their name are here trying to destroy the hole that all the kaiju come from and then pops up for the very first time ever a category 5 kaiju and this category 5 kaiju hits the jaeger that's not gypsy danger and after they got hit by that kaiju they said we don't have, have the facilities for that man and they said we're gonna have to detonate the nuke right now because i'm not going anywhere near that hole you got me messed up but Gypsy Danger tried to help their niggas out, but they got snuck, I mean snuck out of their minds. They raised up the sword arm and then it got immediately snatched by a kaiju, frame one. And then another kaiju started to bite at Gypsy Danger's leg, crippling it. Gypsy Danger took that personally and he stabbed the kaiju that bit him in the leg, in the head, and then he burned his face on some lava, killing them. And then the other Jaeger tells them that the kaiju that took their arm is coming at them at full speed and that they're going to have to run away. But Gypsy Danger is about that life as bro stands firm, pulls at his arm, and has the kaiju basically kill itself. As bro speeds into the blade, cutting its own self in half. And then the other Jaeger is fighting the category 5 kaiju. They already figured out frame 1 that they didn't have the capacities for that big man. But now they really say, alright, that's enough out of you. And then blew up the new on their back. 
and I didn't say killing bro because that category 5 kaiju survived the nuke and now it's just gypsy danger in category 5. So gypsy danger activated their back thrusters and hit this category Die. 5 kaiju with this nasty ass flying clothesline. And while they're falling down the hole to the hole, the gypsy danger stabs category 5 Die. in his back. But this kaiju ain't a category 5 for nothing because it starts using its head and stabbing gypsy danger in the back. Raleigh had been watching a little too much Iron Man because he hits an arc reactor blaster on the Category 5. Killing bro, they fall into the hole. They detonate Gypsy Danger because bro was basically a demon. Killing about 37,000 Kaiju. Bro got a nasty ass collab. But yeah man, that's the end of the fights man. Gypsy Danger is a walking Kaiju soul collector. Moral of the story is, why would you want to fight a gypsy? And matter of fact, why would you want to fight a nigga named Gypsy Danger? And to put a cherry on top, why would you want to fight anything involving the name Jaeger? Aaron Jaeger, these Jaegers, like, they're probably like that. But, that's the end of the video, man. If you liked, like, comment, subscribe, do the good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Bye.